Hello and welcome in. Mark here, aka the Markster. This is video number 87 in the Free CAD series. Today we'll be looking at a macro called Parametric Defeaturing. And that sound you just heard is not a gunshot. We are out on New Year's Eve and people are shooting fireworks. I hope. So we'll go to uh, Tools menu, Add-on Manager, open the Add-on Manager in the Macro section. We will look for the Parametric Defeaturing Macro. I already have it installed. But this is the one that you want to get. You get the magnifying glass on there, Parametric Defeaturing. Get that installed, click install here. And once installed, you go to macro macros and you will find it there. Parametric defeaturing. The first time you run it, it's going to ask you to create a file called parametric defeaturing.py. Tell it to go ahead and create that file. So you actually have two files with this macro. The first one, the FC macro file, that's the one you're going to run. The other one, FreeCAD will import that to keep the objects parametric. So they'll work after you restart and the, the class information is no, no longer stored in memory. But you open a file containing one of these objects FreeCAD can import this file here so the object will work. So what does parametric defeaturing do? There's already a, a defeaturing tool in the part workbench and it works just like that tool except this one's parametric which means when the original object changes, this object will change with that original object. So let's just make a little tube here. And if we, for whatever reason, wanted to remove that hole, we select that face. This works on faces. And here in Part Workbench, you could click this tool. And that creates a defeatured object and hides the tube. So the featured object no longer has that hole. See, there's our tube. But this object here, created in part workbench, is not parametric. So if we come in here with the tube and decide we're going to change, let's say, the height of the tube, well, the defeatured object didn't change. You see that? It's not parametric. It's not connected to its the base object that it was used to create, or that was used to create it. So now let's go. Uh, let's hide this one. And show the tube. Let's make one using the macro. Select that face. Run the macro. And we see that it shows the tube as a child in a tree. And that is the claim children property. It's true by default when you're not working in part design. When you're working in part design, it'll be false by default. <coughs> claim children, true. When I set this to false, you see now how the tree has changed and back to true and back to false so if we change the property of the tube let's make the radius bigger this time then the parametric the featured object changes with it 
So that's the meaning of parametric. If you want parametric, use the macro. If you don't, use the tool and part workbench. So let's continue looking at some of these other properties. Here we have edit faces. And that is false. So this is one of these command triggers. When you set this property to true, it opens up a dialog. It executes the command, and the command has opened up the dialog. And the dialog is used to edit the faces that you selected. And then it sets itself back to false. Here we don't really have any other faces we can select that'll work properly. But if we had, we could select some additional faces, hold down the control key, or different faces all together, and then press OK. But I'm going to press cancel because none of those will work anyway. <clears throat> so what are some reasons that you would use the feature? One reason would be maybe you have an imported step file or you imported STL file, converted it to a solid, and you've got a hole in it or something that you want to remove. Then you can use the parametric defeaturing tool to remove that hole or any other part. It doesn't have to be a hole. It can be an arm or leg or something. So if you don't have the history then that would be the way to go. If you do have the history then and by history we mean the, the model tree of all the showing all the steps used to create the object then whatever step was used to create the part you want to remove you just go in and change that instead of adding a new feature on top of the existing model, which is what you're doing here with parametric defeaturing. So one use case is when you don't have that history. Another use case would be you know, when you're working in part design, everything has to be one complete contiguous solid, one single solid. You cannot have multiple disconnected solids at any step in the process. Well, maybe you could have a temporary support structure that all the pieces are connected to that could be defeatured later in the, in the modeling process after all the separate parts are finally joined together, such as in maybe an uh, exhaust manifold. Usually you can just reorder the the order of operation to do it in a different way so that you're always connected. And you won't need to use this for that, but in some case if you come across it, then you can keep this in mind that you could have some temporary support structure that later gets removed with the, the featuring tool. Another use case could be using uh, th the through all pocket through all in part design. Let me delete this stuff here and start a new model in part design. Create a new body, a new sketch, XY plane. So maybe use through all, but you don't want some of the inner walls done. Maybe we'll pad this. I should say three millimeters. Now let's add. Let's see. A cylinder. And we'll 
I'll make a linear array. And we're going to select a reference, and it'll be this here. Let's go ahead and make this 140. Alright, we got eight pieces there. Let's suppose this is what you're modeling, and you and you need to hold through some of these, but not all of them. So we can put a sketch here. There. Select that sketch. Pocket through all. So now all of these have holes. Well let's suppose we didn't want holes in all of them, maybe not in that one or that one. The rest of them all need holes. And we could defeature that. Now those holes have been removed. Otherwise, your your model tree would be much more complicated because you would need to put a sketch here and pocket up, here and pocket through that one, another one here and pocket down. So you need three different pocket operations. So that's another potential use case for parametric defeatering. It works not only with holes, but if you wanted to remove this top piece here. Well, let me let me let's use our editor. Edit faces, set it to true. Brings up the editor. And we'll add this one to it. Now it might not work. I haven't tried this yet. It does not always work. It did that time. You can remove this by setting refine to true. You can also defeature that extra face there. And you can bring the editor up by double clicking the parametric defeaturing object. So there are two ways to bring it up by setting that edit faces property to true or by double clicking the object in the tree. So I'm going to hold down the control key and select add that face to it. And it has removed that extra face there too. So it's a kind of a way to refine your model in some cases without refining the entire object. Look at some more properties here. Let me get a little magnifying glass. So we already talked about edit faces. So that sets itself back to false. Ready for the next toggle. Now the faces property. It shows which faces we're using. We can also edit that here this dialog so you could you could type these in so if you do it this way just make sure at the end that you select this this object again so that it's highlighted before you press OK otherwise you can accidentally end up with nothing selected and you press OK and you, what you've actually done is clear this whole thing out so make sure to come back and select that again before you hit OK. Another use case for this parametric defeaturing, if you run into a problem with topological naming because you went backwards into the tree and made a change and now your model is broken 
if that change was to remove something then you could do it with parametric defeaturing instead because that gets applied here to the to the end of the model it's not going to affect anything that happens earlier in the tree so that would be another uh, potential reason to use parametric defeaturing of course you want to you want to fix your model properly but if you are in a hurry maybe you got a deadline the client needs this today to start production then you could use this to get it get it done and then when you have more time do a more proper fix the other uh, property here is version this is the version of the macro used to create this object so if you if you have an update to the macro and you save this file and you open it a new version will be different from the version used to create the object hopefully it'll still work okay but if you create a new parametric defeaturing object then it would have the new version for it so this is not the current necessarily the current version of the macro installed it's the version that was used to create this object and we have the refine property here which I'm sure you're already familiar with that can be used to uh, remove extra edges that are not necessary like that edge right here that we removed by defeaturing it we can set refine the true and chances are that will remove that face another use case for parametric defeaturing is let's suppose you need to design something like a rim or a car or a pulley something like that and it takes a five hole pattern but only four of the holes it's something in the way for the fifth one but then you could just create the five hole pattern and remove the hole you want to remove so four holes but still the, the five hole pattern and it's really useful where you would have multiple holes that need to be removed or multiple arms for example if you had 12 12 elements and you needed to not have let's say the ones at six o'clock and eight o'clock positions and you can just make all 12 and then defeature the ones you want to remove. So here's an example of a model made like that. We have a 12 hole pattern, but we didn't want the 3 o'clock and 6 o'clock positions. And here is an example where we had this rectangular pattern but we we didn't want holes in these particular spots there's some examples of ways to use the parametric defeaturing option but that's going to do it for this video thank you for watching and I will see you in my next video.